dust and, and the major uh, my major focusing is uh, to run a workload on pod and vm against uh, OpenShift cluster and it's uh, touch all the resources that related to OpenShift storage network uh, CPU and memory um, I almost uh, more than two years uh, at Red Hat um, and in general if we talk more technical we're using uh, GitHub Action to run our CI and, and most of the work is uh, uh, written in Python, and uh, that's it in uh, two sentences, let's say. Okay. Um, and my future plan is to try to get into the upstream QVert project to understand how it's uh, written, to see how we can uh, improve it, uh, or give or give one give two hands to help you to improve it uh, and, and add more workloads and, and more uh, tests in order that we get uh, more coverage uh, in the upstream side. Great. That sounds great. So I can do a little intro to, uh, to the six scale meeting. So we have uh, the six scale group we meet um, usually. It's it's scheduled weekly. It's we usually meet. It usually ends up being um, two or three times a month. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, as part of this meeting, what we do is um, we look at um, Qvert from the scale and performance perspective, and we look to do build any sort of testing that could possibly expose any bugs. Uh, we used to we look at ways that we can uh, calculate scale and performance um, in Qvert. We look at um, uh, all these different perspectives. We look at tooling, other things like that, uh, and also things in, in Kubernetes. And we kind of we take those things and we look at different ways that we can improve um, things in the community by you know creating pull requests, creating issues, and um, even dashboards and, and metrics and things like that, just so that we have, um, you know, ways to measure scale and things like that. Um, so we, we basically been doing this for a little while now. I think it's been over a year and um, we've had a lot of changes that we've had uh, that we've made over time. We kind of, we started this and we kind of began with um, uh, looking at ways that we can measure uh, was, was a major focus for us. It was, um, uh, a lot of it was focused on uh, like getting alignment on metrics that we could get in Prometheus that could describe for us what, um, you know, how, basically describe for us the performance or, of a of a job that we wanted to run, for example. And so we did a, a bunch of stuff like um, um, here. I can show you. So um, or what I'll do is um, let me. So I'll share my screen here. Okay. And share the document. So um, we dive into this. Here's a link to the, the document. Um, yeah. Add yourself as an attendee, and yes. we'll. Yes. And what I'll do is, uh, yeah, and I'll walk through some of this. So what I'll do is, um, this is uh, we have here is we have these jobs. We this is something that we over time we've worked on these performance jobs. Um, let's see, where is the performance? And this will, I think, clear up some of what we're. Um, some of what we've been able to accomplish and give you an idea of what our direction is. So what we'd have is we have a bunch of, um, we have this proud job that does a few tests for us um, and measures a bunch of things. So we have, let me go to the first one. So there's actually three tests that we run in here. Um, let me see. Or the name of it's at the bottom. So basically, what we do is we um, we create a uh, hundred VMIs, and we do this from from nothing. We basically we create a cluster with um, you know make make cluster up, make cluster sync, mm -hmm. and we create a hundred VMIs. And and what we want to do is we want to measure which image you are using. Uh, 
Fedora? So for, um, I think we use, um, uh, so I'm not sure, it might be a serious image it's, uh, that we use. We, I, it's, I don't know, one of the default images that we use, I don't, I don't know, if, I don't think it's a container disk. Like I think it's something that we, mm -hmm. it's one of the CI images that we use. I, I don't know. We are using a uh, Fedora container disk for low test uh, we, are use, we are running. Okay. I wonder just the configuration you run each uh, each uh, VM. Do you have the one YAML example for? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so I think we are using 128. I I guess that it's too low. Um, So all the CI is based on a shell? We, um, what we do is we, is we, we actually, we trigger it through the shell. It's basically just um, what it does is it runs, it actually runs the tests and um, they're, they're integrated into the test suite. So it's like with, with Kinko. So I'll show you those. Okay, so here's the density test. Uh, we do see if we have the image in here. So let's type and then <clears throat> I don't see the image. Let me see. It's probably buried in one of these um, function calls. So for each test, you create the cluster from scratch and after it run the test and destroy the, the cluster, right? Yeah, that's right. So new random virtual, okay, so here it is. So it's a serious image. And what, once you, you deploy, do the cluster deployment, did you install all the related uh, operators like uh, Qbird and all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Yep for each step or, or for each bunch of, of tests? So the, um, we use the same cluster and then um, what we do is we, uh, so in the same test, we'll, we'll create a bunch, then we'll delete them and then we'll go to the next one. Um, so we do three, we have the, um, Batch of VMIs, um, and then we've got um, another, this is the uh, batch of VMs, and then we have the with the VMs with single instance type in preference. So create 100, delete them, create 100, delete them, create 100, delete them. And then after each one, we measure. So you run each 100 against specific node or uh, on the same node? Because uh, you have a limit to 250 per node, no? Yeah, so we do, so it, it's, it's. Um, I don't know how many nodes it is. I don't know how many out of the infrastructure, I don't know what it provides mm -hmm. off the top of my head, but um, so what we end up doing is because we end up deleting, we we won't we won't overload the nodes. So we create a hundred, we delete a hundred, create a hundred, delete a mm hundred, -hmm. hundred, delete a hundred. But this is the this is the the meat of it right here, and this is what ends up showing up, um, you know, these results here. So that's the basic idea. Is we we create that that hundred, and so we do it three times. What we have here is so we we sort of have two we have, we kind of have two major pillars, and as part of this thing is that we have we have the performance work and we have the scale work. So we kind of we look at um, capturing both in the in the job. So what you see here is you have a bunch of HTTP requests, right? And, you know, these look familiar. We track mm -hmm. those in each job. And so what's important here is like, this is, 
this is an estimate for us, right? Like we, we, this is how much pressure we put on the API server. You know, the number yes, of patch virtual machines. If, if, if I can say that if you launch them at the same, you will, the, it will cause hang on the node side. Are you spin up all, all the 100 at the same exact time? Because I think that it will cause- as fast as possible. Uh, create the, okay. I know, so we have a rate control. So let me see, what is the rate control? Or it's okay, just so we have on, 100 milliseconds in between. So we don't do it at the same time. We just between do one- Between what? Yeah. Between each creation? Yes, yeah, so we create one, create one, and then we sleep for 100 milliseconds and create another one. For, so you say the for bunch of 100, there is between each VM a sleep time. Mm -hmm. So, and there is no verification that the VM is up and running. Do you just think that it's running? No, there is. Um... We have this um, mm. with running the VMI, right? Yep, that's right. Which is okay. um, somewhere in here. Yeah, here we go. So what we do is we wait till they're all hundred running. So if they don't, we we actually fail on this. This is one of the things that will. We we do we different stress. We spin up by hyper thread of uh, a twenty VM at the same time and do this sleep and not each one. That's what you do in your testing? Hmm? Are you saying that's what you do in your testing? Yes. Okay. This is what we do because we want to make a pressure, a real pressure on uh, stress against our node and verify what will happen if 20 user create it at once because in order to see it on extreme state. Okay. okay. That sounds great. No, I mean, so... Um, in this case, we we cause to problem in CPU side. Okay. We need to investigate it because... Uh, but I see that you solve it by sleep between each VM, but it's not... I think it's not uh, fair from testing purpose because it's not the reality. Sure, I, Ellie, I, yeah, Ellie, I agree. I, I think um, I think what you're alluding to here is that like, you know, this is, so what we're doing is we're making a choice to like, it, for us, this is like what we found to be a reliable way to get 200. But like you said, it's like, the, we don't expect the user to do this. It's, so it's running, if I can say that when I asked, I think uh, if I can say that it's run serial and not run in parallel in this way. Yeah. Because they see it for loop against 100. So in order to make it um, more reality, we take we take the number of CPU we have on the server side mm -hmm. and create bunch against the physical CPU. So for example, you have a 20 CPU, physical CPU, so we do balance of 20 and raise 20 at the same exact time. And this in this case, um stress uh a really more perf performance extreme situation yeah no, it makes sense i i think like the test you're describing is 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 something that we want to cover yes, it's just something we case, haven't done in this case we expose to problem on cpu uh, okay. side because when we enter to the node we see that after the 16th or 18th, mm -hmm. we are um, hitting a extensive in intensive CPU usage. And this is something we need to continue and do the investigation and um, behind it. And we have the all the data of nightly, nightly CI. We distribute in the Grafana, the logs in S3 bucket, so we can investigate it uh, later and compare the result. Here, I don't know what, where we have the result here uh, for uh, future, for historical investigation, stuff like it, do we have something? Yeah, so the um, this is what I'm showing. So like in Prow, we have these, we have these objects that, um, that, get, that we can 
um, that we can share. Sorry, I ask you a lot of uh, questions on the same time, but I think um, when, when I come and, you know, writing something, I think always on performance uh, perspective uh, in general and not function. So when I see this test in for loop, I, I, it's more, it's more actually touch functional more than performance, if you understand what I mean. I'm not sure I totally understand, but I think what I understood when you were describing the example to me, like when you're saying like, you're, you're looking to apply pressure specifically on, you know, the, by, by doing things in parallel and, mm -hmm. and stretching and stressing it up. Let, let's, say, let's say, let's say, let's say for over, over all the workload we're running. And if I go each workload database, storage, network, when we test something, we test it in multi-threaded and not serial, like mm -hmm. you test here, because it's not performance, it's functional, what we test here, okay? And if you okay, test all the kind, if you think that you test performance, it's not performance, okay? It's the, the bandwidth is performance, but this is my thinking. And this is what we are doing. We have a Redis database to spin up all the VM and start the VM at once. So when we started the VM on stop mode, the created, the already created, you, we can see it here. You understand what, what I asked? I mean, right. So like what well what, so what I was gonna say is like I understand what you're saying how like the you're saying these are functional. Well what we're no, no, what leave, leave what I said, leave it beside. I ask now because we want to spin up all the VM at the same time, like horse races. Okay. Yeah. So here I see that we run one after one. So in which state the VM exists when we spin up. The idea that you cannot uh, control the scheduler on the node uh, when uh, the VM will start, how you can ha handle it if you have a Redis database and say, okay, already, so now I start all them or all in, in VM, it's simple. You can put all the VM in stop mode and run all the VM at once. So here the VM, I guess, it, it, if I see here, they on a stop mode, or you create them, just create all the VM. And I guess what you could do is like, you could, um, to do what you're describing, you, you could create the manifest, render them ahead of time, and then- um, But when you create them off, line, like line 221, okay? When you create it, it's it directly run or it just start when you create <clears throat> when you do when you run this step this is um this is what it'll do is it'll make an api call to the api server and then it will go down and go through qvert and then create the pod so the vmi won't it, it it's there's a bunch it of will, steps it, like, it will start right yeah like the pod will Will start and so then the eventually pod, the VMI the will pod start. Will, um, so the launcher pod will launch the VM and the VM will be in the running state in line two to five, right? No, it's not guaranteed. No guarantee. We don't know, but it's starting the process of start. So we, what yes, we do? Yes, the process has started. So yeah. let me explain what we do. We first start all the machine. So not launch it, create the machine with start state, and after it go in bulk and running in multi-thread and start it, not create it. So the time we, we actually calculate, it's from the, not from the creation, it's from the start to running, if you understand what I mean. 
Do you, well, so do you mean just the guest or do you including any? I can share with you if you want what we do, but the, the idea behind it, that in this case, no guarantee, you, you just run 100 VM, but you don't know how the scheduler will uh, react under pressure because you just spin up 100 VM, okay? And the idea in performance state, what will happen that I start a real situation that 20 users start 20 VM at the same exact time. And here it's not at the same exact time because you run it one after other, so the scheduler can handle it. Right. No, I, I understand what you're saying. This is this is this is one of the tests that Marcelo did try. And it's not one that we included in our CI. We actually, this was one that uh, Marcelo did try out in the performance cluster, <clears throat> but we don't, um, I don't think we have it. So it's like a, a different area. This is, so specifically what I'm showing is here is like the, the cluster is shared. We have like um, a very, um, we have, since it's a shared resource, we, <clears throat> the results can vary a little bit. So we, what we do is we, we focus on, we, we kind of make some caveats and and the thing is like with this is that it does get us some information like we do get some pressure here we do get a little bit and and definitely like the api server i totally understand can handle it yes, and so but, can the scheduler but, but, but I it's can like say in one well, word uh, yeah but not if you ask me as performance guy i cannot sign that it's performance test right, right i understand let me let me just finish so like what what we're doing is is we want to we want to see these creation to runtimes. It's not the same level of pressure. Like I, I totally understand that, but you just uh, uh, you pressure. just want to see the creation time. Till yeah, we want to. Yeah, because what we want to do here is we want to compare across. Um, we want to. We need a simple way for us to compare across pull requests on a mm -hmm. shared cluster, mm -hmm. and we need to do it in, in a way that is going to give us some consistency. Like we don't want. Like we don't want to. What the goal here is not to apply like crazy pressure and see how it holds up. Not in this test. What we want to do is to get like this test is to get some consistency uh, across different PRs and get some data back. And that's that's what we're doing here. But we I, I think the one thing though I, is important to highlight is like these are this is three tests that we're looking to do like or we're, that we're doing now, and we have a bunch of data that we've been gathering and using for a while. And what you're talking about are a lot of tests that we have talked about before, even tried and just one offs that we want to do. We just haven't had the the time to to do this stuff. And so I like what you're, mm -hmm. what you're describing to me makes total sense. I just we just haven't had a chance to do it. And I'd like to like if if you'd like, Ellie, I mean, I think what would be nice is that if you write down some of the tests that you really care about in the in our document here and you know, let's let's create some issues. You, you say, and for example, to them. enhance the 100 case to be a high perf more performance um, in, in, in performance way, for example. So leave this test and maybe to create another test in, in Yeah, power, we could try that. This test. Certainly, yes. we could try that. I, I think like, that's what I'm saying is we can try that. I, I would like to see because when, see when we does. run it in our um, in our way in performance way we start to see some problems uh, against uh, against cluster and stuff like it and it's make the whole idea of the test more interesting. Okay, we we found and see issues that we cannot see in this uh, test. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm there with you on that, and also and this for is where, pod. Uh, All, also if we, if we talk about pod, okay, in pod yeah. we attack it differently because in pod you don't have a state like VM. So what we are doing, we have a Redis database, and each pod update that it's uh, ready, and once it's ready, we spin up all the pod at once. So to run this. Uh, the same test in pod, it's if, if you want to run 100 pod each node, it's not performance test. 
I can sign it if everyone, everyone you want. It's functional test. Functional, it's a big functional test, but it's not test the performance at all. So this is yeah. the complexity when you come and write a, a performance test, okay? And it's take for me more time because if I need to write a, a for loop, so I <laughs> I will do all the workloads in one week and everything behind it. But to make it in performance perspective, it take sometimes uh, it take more time than regular. Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. I, we have so we have a few other areas. So we have this thing called this uh, this load generator that we did. Um, we have a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, where is the, um, I was just over it. So we have, you, so here we don't wait. We, what we do, this is what we would use in, a, in the performance cluster, which is, and this one's important because it's the dedicated cluster. There's no one sharing this cluster. It's just for running the performance jobs. And this one, we do like sets of like 200, 400, 600, and we create them as fast as we can. So this is more along the lines of the, the pressure that you're looking for. And this is where Marcelo ran into all kinds of problems with QPS and stuff when you started mm -hmm. using this kind of stuff. This is along the lines of what you're talking about. And we were using this dedicated cluster, which we haven't been because there was down for like three or four months, but it's recently being res recently been resurrected. And we wanna actually bring it back and start doing some of the tests again that we have here. And even some of the ones you're describing, and I'm sure there's some improvements we can make in here. Like what I'm hearing is there's probably other ways we can apply pressure even more than what we're doing even just by creating things on the for loop, maybe we can have all the objects created ahead of time and then um, in, a, in a buffer, and then we just fire them all to the API server at the exact same time and, and measure. Like there's a lot of things we want to do here. And, and um, I, I totally hear you, but what I'm saying is, Ellie, is these tests, um, I, I would be great if you can write some of them in the notes because there's things that we want to do. And, but we, I mean, it would be good to, if you can enumerate on them and we can, you know, discuss them and I can help point you in the direction of where we can actually yes, go and implement these things. In order to know, to improve something, we, uh, I need to get more details about the environment, to get more details sure. how all the things connect together and all this stuff. So I don't have this uh, uh, data yet, okay. but we, for sure <clears throat> this is the, the direction is to take uh, what the existing to improve, maybe to add more workload. Um, so uh, according to your recommendation, what do you think how it's going to be? Um, yeah, let me put some links in, in here for you. So here's like, so this is gonna be, um, this is for dedicated. Uh, by the way, I don't have access to this uh, document. I, I asked for permission. Oh, you need to join. You need to join the Qvert Dev um, Google group to get access to it. I asked uh, there to join. I didn't get any answer there. Yeah, you won't. Okay. So the way that won't work. So you can't go it, do it through Google. Like you have to go to the. <clears throat> if you go to the Qvert Dev Google group and you hit join with them um, when you're logged into one of your Google accounts, then you'll get access to this. It'll you'll have the ability to. Have right access. Okay, I will try it after the meeting, no problem. Yeah, okay. What I'll do is I'll put some links in here. So what we have, um, so we have, I'll put, let me do two things. So we've got, we've got our um, performance job um, that we say uh, we run for PR. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is the, um, this is an example and, um, by the way, also the, the running time when you run it on performance, uh, in performance way, sometimes it's take more time than running it functional because you stress the machine, you stress the environment. Uh, for this example, do you have the runtime of this 100 test, 100 VM test? Yep, I do. I have the, so I just put in there um, the Google results. Has a, a, you know, run window to run this test for how long? Uh, I think we've got like a few hours that it gives us, but I think it takes us, uh, oh, I don't uh, just have the time on here. I don't know if it has it in the job, but if it doesn't, then it should um, 
have it somewhere on the, I don't know, I don't actually see it the whole time I, I so the thing is um well the the end time test though isn't i guess is important the the thing that we do um is since we have multiple tests in here it wouldn't be valuable what we have here is like i was saying before is there's a bunch of data that we output and the, here's another thing that i'll give you a link to this is important for this is how we use to measure so let me go to um give you a link to it um that's no, not here So give you a high level what this is, it's a, um, we take our, we've created a bunch of metrics and these metrics get into Prometheus. And then what we do is we scrape Prometheus whenever we run our, um, our job. When you say the Prometheus, you just capture the, the metrics that interesting you. Well, yeah, that's so correct. That's correct. Yeah, we do it and we CPU, capture memory. memory, all this stuff is actually do, and do you have the YAML with the queries that you yeah, so you can we we were it's written in go it's it's in here the um the things that we that we capture you can find it in this tool and all the things that we we care about. Hmm. Okay, but we can add anything to it we I don't think we have. Yes, um, yeah. But you can take you can take a look for yourself. But basically, this is some of the output now. Like some of the things we do, um, like you can see, we take P ninety nines of things. We look at the deletion times. We look at um, the number of requests, um, stuff like that. Like that that get done, and we and we and we chart those. So oh. that's what that is. And there is option to run it um, against a local uh, cluster before. Yes. Merging. Yeah, and this is actually yeah. This is one of the so this is one of the um the nice things about it. It's basically a a tool you can run locally and you can point at any Prometheus and it will scrape the data for you. So if you have the local cluster and the deployment, also the deployment of the cluster. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to, um, for deployment, um, you can use uh, make cluster up and make cluster sync commands. And for the environment, uh, I guess uh, I saw that it's Golang, so I need uh, which ID you are using for it on uh, um, visual. Uh, I I just use Emacs. I'm a for IDEs. Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty basic. I know, but maybe so you can use are, anything. You are not a, using uh, any IDE for uh, to do the deployment and all this stuff uh, locally. No, no, no. So um um, you just need um. No, I'm not. You can. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty lightweight. It uses Docker and Docker. You just need. You just need Docker running on your local host, and and it's pretty simple. This running these two commands will get you a local running cluster. And do I need to install something uh, in order to have this uh, support for cluster and all this stuff? Or no? Yeah, it just it, Docker will be the minimum requirement. Get we get are together. using the Podman. Is it enough? Or is yeah, not you supported? Can use, it's supported yes. Podman. Yep, you can use Podman. And, and that's all. Yep. And uh, for the cluster, do I need something special? No, no, that's all you need. Is uh, this will take you these two commands plus you know having Podman and cloning the repo and Git will give you what you need. And and to run the it will run also the test. No. So to run the performance tests, uh, I forget if we have uh, if it's in it should be in Make somewhere. Let me see. Uh, I need to check the make recipes. We have like a performance. Yeah, we do. Okay, here we go. So you can you do make perf test, and this will run. Um, this will run the uh, this um, hot perf test. Yes, it'll run this test, the one that um that creates oh. them with the hundred millisecond sleep time. 
Okay. Uh, can you add it to the to this line? Yep. Okay. Do you have um, do I need more things to make it work locally? No, this should do it. Uh, this that should be what you need to give us a try. Okay. And so if I need to do modification and stuff like it, I do it in the dedicated file and only these three commands should the make cluster up and synchronize and there is make cluster I think down also, right? When they need yeah, to... there is. Yeah, when you want to reset it. In the make yeah. file, right? Yep, it's in the make file. Yeah, it's just another recipe. Okay, so I don't need to install nothing that is related to Qbert. I'll be installed when I do make cluster up, right? Yeah. Okay, nice. Nice. So I will try to play with it. Um, and by the way, I can reach you uh, directly by email or stuff like that. Yeah, that's it. fine. I'm on the Qbert dev Slack. Um, channel and, and the and Kubernetes, you can um, and in this channel, and ah, you there. can reach me oh, and yeah. others. Others in six scale are in this channel as well, so you might and other people yes. in the community might respond too. So, you know, put your questions in there and get them answered. Okay, great, great. So, I will go over it and see you know, to make it work locally and try to play with it. And after it, I will try to think how we can take it to the next stage from uh, first from performance, performance aspects, second, maybe to add more workloads. Yeah, and that sounds to great. touch more area. And, and so uh, do you know, uh, we talk about at the beginning on the YAML, which container we can see it in the test, or I need to dig in, uh, into this uh, because um, I'm thinking about huge uh, VM, for example. I don't know if it's uh, um, uh, if it's uh, okay to run a Windows VM because you know it's licensed or something like that. It's a required license, but it's more realistic scenario. To spin up. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if CI has anything with Windows right now. I think it's all Linux based. Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. Maybe it's something you can ask in the mailing list. I'm not sure. Yes, and uh, storage. Do we have st test of uh, storage? Uh, no, we don't. This is something we've had at some conversations a while ago on doing, um, but we haven't. We haven't. It hasn't picked up a lot of steam. So, if uh, it's something we can resume, we just haven't had the bandwidth to take this on. We have something that, um, yeah, I mean, it's something that we're interested in doing, though. That'd be great. So, Hall is using the local uh, storage ephemeral, right? Uh, ephemeral, yeah. not local storage. Yeah. Okay, and there is a network testing. No, this is another one, another lane that we'd like to add. We're basically the only thing we're doing is we're 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 stressing Kubernetes API server as much as we can in Kubert control plane. That's all. Mm. And we don't go into network or um or just no databases. Nope. Mm. That's something that, uh, but let's, I think that I should start play with it because I'm not familiar, but um, once, actually once I merge it, someone should, uh, re will uh, review it and after it to commit, but we need to test it. Uh, there is a, you have a test that run against the code we push that I can yeah. uh, run it uh, locally before? Yeah, what we do is we, I mean, we basically what we do is we run this test. This is our gate, like the, um, this no, is what I, we expect. I say that against the code, 
uh, unit test against the core that are writing. No, it's the it's part of the integration test, I guess. But yeah, we have. Is, um, uh, yeah, there is in. Um, um, I don't remember where it is. So if there are there are some in the. Um, well, let me see. Hold on. If I don't know if the audit tool has any. No, the audit tool doesn't have any. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe something you can look at when when you go through. I mean, there'll be uh, if there are unit tests, you, they'll run when you run. Um, I think there's a okay. make test command. Not perfect. This one. Okay. When you run make test. Um, if if I summarize, there there are more missing thing, except. Um, improving performance, maybe uh, uh, other integration tests that missing or just performance aspects? I think it's largely on the performance side. I think we've got things, I mean, I think this will, it's a huge area. So I mean, there's, some, I'm sure there's tons of things we can add. Mm, okay. And Okay, and regarding the cluster, I guess you have a huge cluster. So if I try to run it on my local, my my local machine will crash. So I think that uh, I need uh, to yeah, find so a way. Yeah, so I would start. I would just start with this, just so you get familiar, because this is just the building blocks of what we have. And then when we we have that dedicated cluster and. I was going to look and see here if it is up and running because, oh yeah, here it is. So here is the performance cluster. So this one, if you want to, uh, okay, here's the time. So here's, there's two hours at the top. Okay. This one takes two hours to run. This is on the dedicated cluster. This should be um, where we eventually want to target a lot of your tests that you're describing because this is only on this is the only one that shares, or no one shares this resource. It's just for testing. Mm -hmm. uh, how many VMs is this? This looks like 200. No, 400? No, this is a 600 VM test. Yeah, so and you can see like this is, um, this is our larger stress, or the largest stress that we can do right now. Maybe we can do larger, but um, yeah, I mean, here's, the, so here's the results. 600 or 300? I'm pretty sure this is 600, let's see. Yeah, so 600 and then here are, so like you can see, like we balloon pretty significantly on the P50, the P95 and P99 from creation to running. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that it's not in serial. We're basically creating it as fast as we can. Okay. So when you uh, when you guys have some time, I, I just have a have a question. Uh, unless there's something else in the agenda. No, go ahead. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to capture some information. I'm, I'm trying to help a university that wants to uh, build a, a shared campus, pretty much, uh, with virtual machines. And um, they, they want to try and understand who out there is running a massive amount of, of Qvert deployments. Um, and I stumble across, of course, the GE4s, the, the NVIDIA. I'm trying to find more out there and, you know, some of the, you know, some of the highlights that may have been found from the cluster at scale group. Uh, are there any findings or any notes or anything like that documented anywhere um, so that, you know, we point them into the community documentation or this is this is a gap we have. We have we've had discussions about this for a while about having a documentation. I'm assuming you mean like how you know what it like the recommendations of running at scale and maybe the the highest yeah. level of scale in the community things like that. Is that what you're looking right. for? Right. Like yeah. um, you know, at what point it's it's dumb to have more than a certain amount of VMs in a single cluster. You know, with a with your control plane and uh, is you know is 500 or a thousand VMs 
good. Uh, once you pass the thousand number, maybe the etcd requires a, a different, a different performance. Uh, uh, you know, um, so, so so things like that, right? So. How many, how many VMs do we want to run into a single cluster? How many nodes have we actually put into, into a cluster and the VMs? Um, how many VMs per node, right? Because there's also a pot limitation. Um, things like that. Uh, that's where- Yeah, there's a good, um, let me see if I have it here somewhere in the notes. There's a good guiding document that we used a while ago from Kubernetes. Um, that I would point you to if I can locate it here. Uh, that answers some of this. And so the thing, uh, all right, here we go. This is it. So the thing about this is um, like kind of the way to look at the way to look at this problem is like with with Qvert, it's really it's it's pods pretty much. Like it's like even though there are VMs and like there's a Qvert control plane in the middle, one of the biggest factors is going to be Kubernetes. And this is what this document focus on and explains it really well. So basically the idea is like that is described in this this um, presentation is like how different things affect the overall pressure that you apply. And so for example, um, let me see if I can find a good one based on what you're asking. There's um, should be notes in here. So here's like an example. So if you um, if you have the number of pods per node at um, 110, let's just say, then the number of nodes you can scale to comfortably ends up being about 1300. And then on the other side of this, if you have 30 pods per node, the number of, oops, the number of nodes you've got to scale to comfortably is 5,000. This is, this is from a few years ago, but this is what, um, you know, they were, so back in 2018, so six, five years ago. This is what was tested at the time. So this is, I, I think this is along the lines of what you're looking for. And when you kind of extend this to VMs, right? VM is, VM is just a pod. I mean, there's the Qvert piece in the middle, but this will give you a sense of like how it would work with Kubernetes. And it should work like the same with, with Qvert. I mean, Qvert has for the most part, what we've been doing in this SIG is making sure it keeps up with the Kubernetes scale. And we've been able to see that. So. I would say these are good numbers for you to go by. Right now, the the thirteen hundred node quantity feels a little exaggerated, even for um, for for large companies in, into a single cluster. Um, then, are, does this imply that having two hundred pods but fifty nodes is absolutely fine? Um, cause I remember there was also networking limitations after 110 pods. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on the, on how you set up your IPs, but you should, um, it should be, uh, it should be fine. I mean, I don't know exactly. I mean, but you, I mean, you'll probably have to test this 200 and 200 pods and how many nodes you said 500. Yeah. Even 50, right. Cause 50. 50 yeah. bare metal nodes is 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 already it's it's already a good quantity, right? Um, and then if we have you know a hundred virtual machines in a node, which is probably too dense, um, it, it's already a massive amount of, of virtual machines. So again, uh, this is in the scale of of universities and and, and, and different users. So just just trying to to get into a, a sweet spot versus um, you know a uh, massive Nvidia scale. But sure. yeah. I think it would work. I mean I, I think like just I mean I don't know. I mean it's not it's not on this chart here so I can't tell you but like yeah. I think it would work I mean it seems like it would be well within the boundary of of um safety for the for Kubernetes yeah okay yeah I mean if if this is 1300 nodes then, uh, yeah I mean you're you're way down here like in this little corner right. so I, I, you're, you're probably fine at 200 right 
Okay. Um, and and are there any other limitations that um, that are well known? I guess. Um, yeah, there's a ghost. This this uh, presentation actually goes into a few like it's some relationships between services, backend service, um, namespaces, services for namespace. Here's another one. This is important um, and one we actually do see in our in our measurements a lot. Uh, pod churn. So uh, even at NVIDIA, like we, this is one of the biggest pressure pressures that we see. Like the, so, in other words, like the amount of pods you create and delete and an update per second. This is like this applies a lot of pressure. So um, you know, if you're, I mean, I don't know what your use case is, but if you have a lot of people creating and doing workloads in the very quickly and high throughput, then it will apply a lot of pressure. Right. I, I, I did I did capture they may create VM hundreds or thousands of VMs per second. So I can see how this is um, a thing for them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All there's right. a few others here. I think uh, namespaces, pods for namespace and stuff like that. The link, um, I'll copy it up to the top just so if you want to. I found it. I, I found you it. got it? Okay. Yeah, thank Good. you. Um, and now is, was there any other, was there any, I'm assuming once the virtual machines are created and the pressure in etcd or any of the, on the control plane is off, um, is, is this, is this something we, we, we see as well or, or it, when you guys are running through um, uh, through this benchmark jobs, um, what are the things you're monitoring? Um, is it just the the how long it takes to provision a VM, like the provisioning time? Or are you actually looking at the underlying infrastructure of you know CPUs, memory, and and so on? As they are consumed, um, and and the overcommit ratio as well, uh, are we doing an overcommit ratio like we do with, with things like OpenStack, uh, like an eighteen to one or sixteen to one, um, or do you guys just go one VM, one CPU? Um, yeah, we haven't. So this is another area where like. Like Ali had even talked about, like we we haven't the, these tests haven't expanded or haven't matured to the point that we have some of the things that you're talking about. Like we could very easily start measuring some of the the CPU and memory changes that can happen on the control plane based on the amount of pressure we're doing. We don't have that. We have we do have dashboards like for especially on the performance cluster that um, that we were reviewing before when we were actually going through and doing this and like it helped us find a bunch of um, go routine leaks and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but it's not something that we, um, that we report specifically in, you know, as part of the job and, and, and check and fail our gate on, but we kind of, we do look at it from time to time since like each of these has a Prometheus instance that we can query. So we, we can see it, but we don't, we don't always look, look just because it's not, you know, as a part of the, um, we don't have it automated basically is what I'm saying. Yeah, so so this is mostly checking the failure rate of mass request of virtual machine creation or? Yeah, so what it does, it's going to, we're, we're creating a lot of pressure and we're both in, in the amount of VMs and the speed that we do it in the static K cluster. We measure the number of HTTP requests. This is would be important for scale, like the fewer of these, with the less pressure. So we we do that over the, based on the um, the number of requests we create, and then we measure based on uh, where's my um we measure the um the create to running time for this stuff and, and see what um, how this changes based on the amount of pressure that we apply. Okay, so so there's a running. What what are these? What what's a 
P95, P50, is that like a, a virtual machine type or? No, no, this is, um, this is like the, like this is the 99th percentile. So this is like the oh, okay. worst case and this is the 95th and here's the average of P50. So, it took, so this is 228 seconds. All right, so it took almost so four minutes for the, the VMs to, to be ready. Okay. Yeah, this is um, 600 VMs uh, created as fast as possible. On average, this is we see about that four minute time. Okay, for the entire job, 50% of the virtual machines were done for in pretty much four minutes. Yeah, well, so this, yeah. Um, well, so I would, well, so the way I'd look at it is like Rethius is gonna average it. So there could be a few of them that were done in 20 seconds. And then right. it kind of slowly crept up and to the point, right? Like that's so, but the, right. Like the, I guess the way I look at it is the average of, of all 600 ends up being 228. And what's this running on this 600 virtual machines? How many, how many nodes is that running on? I don't know the topology of this dedicated cluster. Unfortunately, I need to figure that out because I haven't looked at it in a while. So I don't remember, but okay. I can find that out and I can leave it in the notes for you. I, I can, Ask Brian, he'll know. Yeah, because I, I don't know if this is 10 nodes or, or five. And then that's a massive, massive difference. Okay. All right. No, just just uh, just wondering. This is this is of course validation to um, you know, uh, if, if there, you know, if if this university wants a development environment, this isn't the case right now, but if they want a development environment that wants to execute virtual machines on demand like this, then yeah. Okay. Well, no, thanks for sharing. And we're past our time. Didn't want to take more of the time than you got scheduled. Um, well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the questions. And, um, you know, really appreciate you, you. You know, as you, as you find, you know, if you, if you get any more questions about scale or problem or things that are going on, you know, please come back and, you know, we'd happy to discuss more and try and solve some problems, anything you guys encounter and, you know. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I, I, I join time to time. Actually this call I've had it in my calendar like for, for two years. So I run, uh, I join, you know, about once a month or so, uh, but I just stay quiet. But most of the time is pretty much about this dashboard. Um, and um, yeah, I, I just, you know, want to, I wanted to talk more more hardware. <laughs> uh, sure. And, well, uh, no, I'm glad you brought it up because we can I can find that out for you. And you know, please come back with your hardware questions, and we can. It's because it's really important, right? Because I mean, this is what you're getting at here is like there's a lot of variables and scale and performance, right? And 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 this is why right, this is part of the problem. So, you know, if this is something that that you need to know the very nitty gritty details on, like you know, let's. You know, please raise that, and we can find that out for you. I I will. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your time again. Of course. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.